Hi and welcome to another class on IBPS English. Uh, today we will be doing a very intense vocabulary class. Um, so let's get started on that. So the topic for the day is synonyms and antonyms. As I said, it's a heavy vocabulary class. Okay, so gear up. Uh, you know, just make sure that you have worked on a diction uh, on your vocabulary. If you haven't done that already, please take steps. And make sure you get there. Okay, so uh, as I said, the goals for today's class: synonyms and antonyms. What are synonyms? Synonyms are nothing but similar words. Okay, words that are similar in meaning. Antonym is opposite. Okay. Now these are exercise question types that we've seen back in our primary school. Okay, so it's nothing new. And we go to the previous session's CPP question. Look at this. Uh, this is what most of you went wrong with, is what I believe. Okay. Now there will be a spate of unseasonal rainfall in December in recent years. Now what is to be noted here is recent years is past. Any problem there? Okay. So I'm looking for something that is again going to reflect that tense. In this case, it is past tense, right? There has been a spate, okay? So, this uh, deals with past tense, so it is a very strong contender. There has been a spate of unseasonal rainfall in December in recent years. Makes sense. It will have been, will here is future tense, okay? Then, there is being, being is continuous, present continuous, correct? So, this does not make sense and then it may have been, okay, this is past but there is a certain element of uncertainty, it may have been, may is uncertain, okay. But when you talk about the past, you talk about events that have already happened in this case on seasonal rainfall, okay. So, it is something that is very certain to have happened, so that does not make sense, okay. So, in this case, A makes perfect sense, A is your answer. Any problem here? So, whoever has joined the class, could you please say hi, good morning and good morning from my end. Okay. So, uh, let us make it a little interactive so that, uh, you know, I understand your concerns, you understand what I say. I can probably explain it, uh, you know, customized according to uh, your wishes, if you could just come online and uh, tell me, you know, uh, whatever doubts you have, right? So, um, we deal with a vocabulary class as I said today. Now, remember that good vocabulary comes from gradual reading, okay? Now, it is, you cannot really, you know, build a vocabulary overnight. That is just not happening, okay? Uh, so, please read. And this is why I have book suggestions every single day. Hi, Manisha. Hello. Akash, hello. How are you? Okay. So, Manisha and Akash, tell us how, uh, uh, how good is your preparation for IBPS? Okay. So, while you start with that, I will just, uh, uh, you know, give a very quick introduction on today's book suggestion. Okay. Uh, Frani and Zui is by J.D. Salinger. Now, Salinger is one of the most reputed and controversial authors of all times, okay. So, uh, he is all American and he is known among, uh, uh, you know, circles 
intellectual circles as one of those controversial writers and he focuses on the younger generation. So, his books uh, will always deal with a very young protagonist okay, and their issues, their confusions, uh, a lot of such things. The protagonist in some cases you cannot really call them the protagonist because uh, you know not everything that they do seems right to you. Okay. So, that is the idea of um, uh, that is the central idea of Frani and Zoe as well. Now, uh, this particular book Frani and Zoe deals with religion, uh, faith across the globe. Okay. So, give it a shot you would probably like it. It is not one of those boring reads on religion, it is a very good uh, comprehensive and uh, you know a practical take on spiritualism. Okay. All right, so we move on to as I said our class on vocabulary, correct? Okay. So, um, Akash says hi, I remember words through newspaper. Good, 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 very good Akash. Uh, so, read the newspaper very uh, thoroughly and very regularly. Okay. So, regular reading is what will take you to uh, a good vocabulary end of day. Okay. So, uh, Akash if you do read books as well I can probably give you suggestions, but newspapers are really good especially for IBPS because they take passages from these newspapers. Okay. So, just make sure that your newspaper is something of great quality. Okay. All right. Good. Now, we look at this particular tree. Okay. Now, this is how this is a very basic figure explaining the uh, you know uh, the birth and evolution of languages as we know it today. Okay. Now, these are the eastern languages that is a very uh, what do you call uh, you know a separate branch. Okay. Now, you have Mandarin that is Chinese. Okay. The most spoken uh, uh, Chinese dialect is Mandarin and these are the associated languages. Okay. Now, not many of us have much of an idea about eastern languages. And remember that English does not have much in common with these eastern languages. So, we deal with that maybe later. Look at this tree. Okay. Um, you have on one end the, okay, the root, the stem or the, uh, the trunk is Indo-European language. Okay. So, the Indo-European languages are built kind of together. Okay there is English and German together. Now, if you study German or French, you would see that there is a huge overlap. Okay. They, are, they have a lot in common, English, German, French, etc. Okay. And then you have Spanish, French, Portuguese, Russian okay. uh, and then the sub-Russian languages. Then you have the Indo languages. Okay. Now, with this you have your North Indian languages. Okay. So, now remember that the root is the same, okay. Indo European. Now, there is a very uh, major Sanskrit influence on these languages, okay. And from these, you also have some commonality with the uh, European languages, okay. For example, I will tell you that um, navigation, youth, okay. now these have their roots in Sanskrit, okay. Navi, okay. this is the root word is actually from Sanskrit. So, you would realize that if you learn languages, there is always an overlap, it is easier to understand where what comes from, it is pretty interesting as well. Okay. Now, um, so that is about your you know basic commonality with this. Now, you have separate branches, here are your uh, uh, Asiatic languages, now I do not know much about this, so let us just leave it, Arabic is what we know. Then there is another separate branch where you have the Dravidian languages, the Proto-Dravidian languages, that would be your South Indian languages. Okay. Then, you have some um, Eastern languages again, 
okay. So that would be your Malai, Bahasa, uh, Chavanis, etc. So if you, you know, this is just to give you an idea about the overlap, okay. Youth again is from, uh, the root is from Yavanam, that is Sanskrit, okay. So it's, uh, you should uh, understand that studying vocabulary, you know, a word, its meaning and an example sentence, that can be quite mundane, okay. So if you study, you know, a little bit of what is, what lies underneath, it becomes interesting. That is why I started with this particular, uh, you know, uh, tree today, okay. Now, uh, we deal with some Greek roots. We have already done a few here, okay. For example, you know that biblio has to do with book, okay. So from that you have bibliophile, someone who is a book lover, okay, bibliography. Uh, so that would be your, uh, you know, uh, what books you have taken your information from, alright. Then Chrono, Chronos is the god of time, the Greek god of time, okay. So from that you get chronological order, chronometer, okay. So when you, uh, you know, set something in a chronological order, you just put it in the, the order of time, okay. And then a chronometer, a watch can be a chronometer, it measures time, meter is measure, chrono is time, okay. So if you can split these words into the root words, it becomes very simple for you to figure out the word meaning, okay. Uh, then there is geo to do with earth, okay, geology, photo is to do with light, aqua to do with water, aquatic animals, okay, audi is to do with here, okay. This has nothing to do with the German car brand Audi, all right. Audi, auditorium, auditory, okay. Then, circ is round. You have um, circumference, circumlocution, circle. Then, J U R J U R is law. From this, you have jury. Then, you have jurisdiction. Okay, uh, perjury against the law. Okay, so J U R is the root word for law. Then, manu is to do with hand. What do you know with this root word, manu? Manuscript. A manuscript is something that is hand written, script is the, S-R-I-B is the root word for S-R, uh, sorry, S-C-R-I-B is the root word for write, hand written, pack is peace, from which you get pacify, okay, the Pacific Ocean, very peaceful, okay, so are there any tsunamis there, yeah, I guess so, not very pacific indeed, okay. Next, look at this, uh, this is a good list of, uh, you know, root words and their examples, okay. Now, whenever you have a or an, typically it means without, okay, in, im, a, uh, okay, all of that would be without, abyss, abyss means without an end, okay, he fell into an abyss of uh, self-pity, meaning endless self-pity. Then add is towards, advance. Agree is to do with agriculture, to field, okay, agrarian economy. Then look at this, ame, ami, amor is to do with love of friend. Amos is the Latin god for love and friendship. Okay, from which you get amorous, amiable, amity, okay, uh, ambi we have already seen, andro, okay, andro is for men, then gyn -G is for women, from these you will get androgynous, okay, then there is android, okay, 
misogyny what is misogyny gyn as i said is the root word for woman female misogyny is against woman okay so gender inequality starts there then we've already seen auto in several classes av is the root word for birds avian meaning bird to do with birds okay then cap c a p is to do with the head okay so decapitate meaning chop off the head per capita per head per capita income okay income per head capture and then chrome is to do with color from which you get monochromatic meaning one color okay then c a r n corn this is to do with flesh okay so you get carnivo carnal of the flesh okay so if you study these roots you can figure out meanings pretty easily so akash and manisha uh please make sure that you learn these roots it makes your job easier to learn uh you know the words that come from these roots now look at this klar okay klar is clear from which you get clarity in german in fact it's klar only okay then there is clear okay uh remember that clar is the root word for clear then as we saw that cap is the root word for head similarly corp is the root word for body okay so corpus fund okay the head fund uh, sorry uh, the fund for the body okay corporal then there is dia okay what is diameter dia is the root word for wire okay so what is a diameter you have a circle okay across the ends you connect and it is the diameter through the center of course okay then so then there is e or x okay which is out of i am excommunicating you from this group meaning i am putting you away from i am you know refusing you entry within this group okay so excommunication ego is self okay so egoism is self love epi means outside over so typically it's epilog okay so what is prolog epilog now you know that log is the root word for word okay now prolog is before so when a book starts there is a, st a strict timeline correct so what happens in the prolog is something that's happened earlier the epilog is a brief on what happens later okay what is monolog conversation with just one person that's monolog shakespeare is known for his monologues then fac is the root word for make and also for easy from which you get facile okay facile means easy okay so now we move on to example questions the national media has tended to focus 
far more upon occasional discord than on our spectacular achievements. Our job here is to find the antonym of the word in uh, under, a word that has been underlined. Okay. So, here are your options. There is tranquility, harmony, failure, confusion. Okay. Now, remember that discord, DIS is something negative, correct? Cord, what are the words that you know of? Accord, concord, and then there is of course discord. Okay. Now, these two mean be in tandem with, you conclude together okay, or you are in agreement. Discord is the opposite of agreement. Okay. So, you are looking for a word that means agreement, correct? Tranquility means peace. Harmony is the word that you are actually looking for, it means agreement. In the larger picture, everyone lives in harmony, meaning they agree with each other. Then there is failure. Failure and discord are not antonyms. Confusion, quite a possibility, but in this case, you are better off with harmony because harmony is exactly the antonym of discord. Any problem there? Uh, Manisha and Akash, it would be great if you could just, you know, uh, give us the answers. Uh, Let us just discuss the answers, the questions, as and when we uh, see the questions. Okay. So, the answer here is harmony. Now, look at this. What is the opposite of discard? Accord, harmony, agreement, concord, fit match, peace, agree, then there is harmoniousness, correspond. Okay. Next, the evidence she gave in support of her theory was quite copious. Okay. Now, you might not know the uh, meaning of the word copious. We will uh, deal with copious a little while later after seeing the options. Now, look at this. Uh, these are the options. Okay. And then you say the evidence she gave in support of her theory was quite dash. So, I have an argument and to strengthen the argument, I give a, a you know a certain piece of evidence. Is that enough? Is that a lot? Is that very less? These are typically the meanings that copious can take. Correct. Now, cope is the root word for a lot, plentiful. Okay. Have you heard of this cornucopia? Corn is the root word, I mean, uh, it means horn. Cornucopia is the magical horn that gives a lot. Okay. It is something like our uh, Kalpa Vriksha or the Akshaya Patra. Okay. So, wishes come true and you never uh, go hungry. Yeah. So, cornucopia is probably the uh, Greek equivalent of that. Okay. So, uh, from this I also want you to look at corn. Okay. Corn means horn. Okay. Now, do you understand why the corn cob mace that is called corn? It looks like a horn. Right. Then, there is the unicorn. Harry Potter fans. Okay. Uh, what is a unicorn? It is a mythical creature that has a single horn. Correct. What are the other animals that you know that have uh, a single horn? Not mythical. Anyhow, you think about it. Unicorn literally means one horn. Unicorn. Okay. So, copious means plenty. Then, uh, so what is the, uh, you know, the word here that means opposite of plenty? Scanty. Scanty means very, very, very insufficient, very less. Okay. So, any problem here? This is the word that you are looking for. The others are quite easy, so I am not discussing them unsatisfactory, unconvincing, poor. You would already know that. Okay, so, now look at the tune. 
we interrupt the copious flow of commercials for a moment of news ok. So, very subtle sarcasm there or not so subtle yeah copious is abundant plentiful in great quantity ample abounding in matter thoughts or words. Self reproach is not always a good virtue ok. You might not know the meaning of the word self uh, reproach ok. Now, reproach means criticism. Okay. So, you are looking for a word that is opposite of self criticism. Self esteem you give yourself importance quite a contender. Self assurance, assurance happens when you know you have your doubts and then you have self assurance you tell yourself no, no, no you know what I will just I am assuring myself that I am right here I am wrong here I mean and all that ok. So, this is also a contender ok. Then self justification, self justification and self assurance almost mean the same. So, if one is a contender the other is an equal contender. So, I would eliminate both because it would be very ambiguous correct to uh, look at two synonyms then self satisfaction. Satisfaction is something completely different from what we see. So, self esteem is what you are looking for ok. Now, sat is the root word for uh, you know saturation, satiate, so uh, satisfaction enough. What are the words that you know here? Saturate and hence saturation, satiate, satia satiation and then sate, I am sated, I am satisfied. Then there is satisfy, all of these come from the root word sat. Okay. Now, we look at the previous contest question, it was probably a little tough and not many answered. Akash and Manisha did you try attempting the uh, contest question. Now, look at this app based cap pricing today seems to follow a dash economic pricing model like many other sectors in this free market capital scenario. This is a very important part a clue to what comes here. We are talking about an economic pricing model and then say free market capital scenario, capitalist scenario very important. Now, because we uh, dealt with foreign phrases, French and German phrases yesterday, uh, I thought ok I would give you this for a contest question, but I guess it was a little tough and uh, I got no answers for this. So, that is why I have compensated today, I have given you a very simple question, but let us look at it the, uh, you know one slide later. Now, look at this a la carte. So, when you go to a restaurant, you are asked a question, sir do you want to pick and choose your own uh, you know uh, items or do you want to go and have the standard fare ok. The standard fare you know where there is a very set course, you cannot change anything that is the buffet and the opposite is the a la carte ok. So, you get a pick and choose ok. So, this is a restaurant term, this has nothing to do with economic pricing model. Then there is card blanche meaning empty card ok, uh, empty check meaning you can start afresh that is card blanche. Then there is laissez fire, laissez fire means without governmental influence ok. This is an economic pricing model where there is no governmental influence people do their business the way they want it. Okay. This is the word that uh, fits this perfectly ok. So, typically when you look at uh, you know your Uber and Ola what happens there? There are no fixed prices uh, you know according to supply demand and of course your uh, you know uh, your consumers capabilities or whatever uh, parameters they have. Even for I do not know in Bangalore for a distance of 4 or 5 kilometers, you typically see rates ranging from minimum 
to four digits I guess very soon we will probably be seeing four digits as well okay. So uh, that is laissez faire, laissez faire economic pricing model. Anyhow let us also look at other options. Buildings Roman, Bildungs Roman at the start of yesterday's class we saw Bildungs Roman. This is a literature classification term. It means coming of age, you know, boy meets world, uh, you know, it is all about an adolescent seeing the world, understanding the adult world and all that. Avant-garde meaning very new, okay. So your answer is laissez far and that is C. So we now go to today's contest question, good luck, go ahead. So uh, with your contest question yesterday, I realized that a lot of you have trouble with vocabulary, not just with the foreign phrase thing. Unless you read a lot, remember that it is going to be very tough for you to crack your NAPS exam, okay. So you need to have a very good grasp of uh, good language, so start reading right away if you haven't done that. question is super easy. I hope to make up for yesterday's very tough question. All right, let us move to the next question. The injection was given to the patient to alleviate the pain. When do you have a medicine of any sort? You have pain, you do not go to the doctor and say, you know what, make the pain uh, go from bad to worse, correct. So from this context, you can puzzle out the meaning of this word alleviate should be to do with you know let go of the pain uh, to improve the situation and all that correct. So we are looking for an antonym, why am I looking for antonym questions here? I could have given you synonyms as well correct, why do I give you a list of antonym based questions? Any guesses? So when we do synonyms we do only synonyms, we just look for the meaning, a similar word and that is it. But when you do an antonym question, I teach you the meaning, I give you the synonym and then go find the antonym, okay. So it is a two step process, the, the, the idea of finding the synonym is kind of inbuilt, that is why I have chosen a set of antonyms for you, okay. The injection was given to the patient to alleviate the pain, I am looking for a word that is opposite in meaning to the word alleviate, okay. Elevate means very, something very similar to alleviate. Then sharpen, again elevate and sharpen are very similar. Then there is aggravate. Aggravate, when you aggravate a pain, you make it go from bad to worse, okay. Promote, promote is to market. Okay, so aggravate makes perfect sense. Okay, so C uh, three is your answer. Aggravate. Now look at this. Lev is the root word. It means light. Okay, look at this. Alleviate comes from that to lessen in intensity, to lessen in seriousness. Okay. lack of seriousness is levity and then elevate to raise to lift up, levitate is to float in the air without gravity, okay. So this should give you an idea of LEV words. So now we move on to this question, there is quite tenuous evidence for it. Now, tenuous is not a word that you would have seen much, correct? Or do you know of it already? It is, uh, uh, you know, seriously a tough word to know, correct? Tenuous, I have absolutely no idea. What do I do? Do I try to, uh, you know, 
uh, pull it apart and look at the root words, etc. Well, if you are stumped, look at the options. Okay, substantial, enough, reasonable, ample. Now remember that enough, reasonable, they mean almost the same. Ample just goes one step further in the same direction. Plug these words here. There is quite enough evidence for it. There is quite reasonable evidence for it. They mean almost the same meaning. Yeah, there is an, a, you know, a significant evidence for it. Then you say there is ample evidence for it. There is a lot of evidence for it. Okay. Now, ample, amp is the root word for uh, intensify. So, there is ample meaning a lot. Then there is amplify. What is amplify? Increase. Correct. You have amplifiers, repeaters. Amplifiers in the case of AC circuits and repeaters in the case of digital circuits. No, DC, I don't know. I'm not too sure. But you get the idea. Correct. So, you increase in intensity. Amp is the root word for that. So, all three take you in the right, in the, uh, you know, positive direction. There is quite tenuous evidence for it. Tenuous, okay, means uh, almost the same, by the way. So, this is one question that completely stumps you, okay. Now, substantial means significant okay uh, in this particular case as i said it's a tough question now let's look at this your tenuous vocabulary is tragic that gives you an idea of what tenuous means it means weak okay now the opposite of weak can be substantial reasonable or ample but because weak goes, you know, the correct opposite of this would be substantial, contextually. Okay. Now, enough and reasonable uh, are almost there, but not there. Ample, typically, you don't say for, uh, you know, tenuous. That's not the word, the correct antonym for tenuous. The um, correct answer here would be substantial. Okay. So, all these tunes and you know these pictures, for example, your tenuous vocabulary is tragic, then you have uh, you know copious, uh, we interrupt the copious flow of commercials for a moment of news. All of this is to make sure that you kind of understand, you register the meanings of these words. Okay? The opposite of discard, okay, uh, that would be accord, harmony, agreement, etc. Okay, so remember uh, that your image-based memory is much more than text-based memory. That is why I have incorporated these images. Okay, so um, with this we come to a close of the class. So we let's summarize the class today. Okay. Uh, today we did a lot of intense vocabulary based questions. We also did a lot of uh, root based vocabulary learning and we dealt with a lot of uh, Greek and Latin uh, root words today. Tomorrow let us look at other words. Okay. Uh, for example, we have also done French and German. So, uh, in the next class let us look at Spanish and uh, uh, you know, other languages giving, uh, we also saw German, okay, so that is also done, correct. So, to, uh, so the next class, let us look at Spanish based vocabulary, I guess, okay. Uh, so, with all the vocabulary we learnt, we did synonyms and antonyms. We did antonym based exercises because it incorporates uh, synonyms as well. Now, where do we see antonyms and synonym questions? Typically, based on last year's paper, if that is, a, you know, a book of reference, 
we see them in RC passages. So, one RC passage has 10 questions typically in your IBPS and other banking examinations and 4 out of these questions, 4 out of these 10 questions are vocabulary based questions. You would have 2 synonyms and 2 antonyms typically. So, if you study your vocabulary part very, very, very well, remember even if you do not have time you need not really read the passage, you can still get 4 on 10, ok. So, uh, vocabulary is where you, you know, up the ante, you can improve your score magically with vocabulary. So, please, please, please make sure you study your word list perfectly, ok. Um, so, with this, we come to the close of the class. Now, CPP time. So, the CPP is a set of 10 questions expertly curated. So, whatever concepts that we have learned in class, uh, these 10 questions will be applications of these concepts that were taught in class, ok. So, uh, make sure that you go and do your CPP questions right away with the concepts fresh in mind uh, and then get back to us with the uh, answers and then we will discuss them of course, ok. Now, the CPP is open only to passport members. So, if you are not a passport member, I will decide you know uh, right after the class, you can also look at the application, understand things better with the CPP questions. And of course, CPP uh, questions, please be a nice guy or a girl and uh, share it with others, great luck, ok. So, bye. Have a nice afternoon. Bye-bye.